And in terms of rhinitis, you know, it can be avoided, it can be prevented significantly. And this program here is very, very beneficial, you know, in getting to the root cause of rhinitis. And basically, rhinitis involves stuffed or runny nose. And it's not just allergic rhinitis, we also help with that. But more importantly, we're talking about just chronic rhinitis, that an individual has nasal obstruction for extended periods of time. And this is causing the habit of mouth breathing, which of course, we want to avoid. So in this study that I was the practitioner involved, um, it was conducted with the University of Limerick and it was published in the journal Clinical Ortolaryngology. It showed a 70% reduction of symptoms such as nasal stuffiness, poor sense of smell, snoring, trouble breathing through the nose, trouble sleeping and having to breathe through the mouth. So 70% reduction across all validated outcomes and the first validated outcome here is the visual analog scale. So you see in the blue, the blue is the symptoms pre um, my intervention of teaching the exercises. And at three month follow up, you see the difference is in red. Now the same with the nasal obstruction symptom evaluation test. In blue is the symptoms pre and in red is the symptoms post at three month follow up. And then of course the sinonasal outcome test in blue is the symptoms before doing the exercises and in the red is the symptoms of three month follow up. So across all three validated outcomes, the re reduction to symptoms was 70%. So there's no need for anybody, child or adult, to be going around with the mouth open because we can alleviate nasal stuffiness. We can help individuals make that switch. And of course, making that switch, better sleep, better sports performance, um, better concentration, you know, when we consider that how you breathe literally influences how much oxygen is delivered throughout the body. And in terms of mouth breathing and nose breathing, the nose is far superior.